Hey everybody, we're at the Bradford. <laughs> Scratch that. <clears throat> hey everybody, we're at the Bradfield Recreation Site. It is April 11th, 2019. We're, uh, Closest to the, uh, the closest big town is uh, Cortez, Colorado. We're down in southwest Colorado. Uh, Dolores is a little bit closer. Uh, we're along the Dolores River, uh, just downstream from the McPhee Reservoir. So the area we're going through right now had been a private ranch up until 1978 when the last of the uh, Bradfield family sold off the farm to the government. Uh, it's Bureau of Land Management or BLM land now. I believe this campground is going to be $8 per night. And we've got at least one site that I know of that's down by the river. Yeah, we're, we're overlooking the river a little bit here. We've got some trees to the right. <clears throat> we're about five miles off of the major highway. I believe it's US 491 coming out of Cortez. Um, road is pretty wide and really smooth. I think we drove about 40 miles an hour down the road and no bumps or anything. All right, so here is the Bradfield Campground, uh, also known as Bradfield Bridge Campground. Uh, the Bradfield family had a bridge over the river here where the local ranchers would bring their cattle across in the spring. Lot of shade but everything is really spread out very nice. So we've got the river just on the other side of these trees. This part here says no camping this one must be the boat launch. Let's go take a look at the river. Let's go check out the campground. There's a sign with the map of the lower Dolores River Canyon. <clears throat> Elevation here is 6432. western edge of the San Juan National Forest. Um, the uh, Hoven Weep uh, National Monument is about 30 some miles to the west of us. I believe that's in Utah or right on the border of Utah and Colorado. All right. $8 per site. Or if you've got the uh, Golden Age 
pass, four dollars per site. So loop A was the loop with the boat launch, and we're going to go through B, C, and then loop D at the very end is for horses. Limit 14 days. All right, let's check out our first loop. Campsite number one. Just a short fire ring behind the picnic table. Site two between us and the restrooms. We'll skip pulling into every one of them because you can get a pretty good idea of what to expect on most of these. Campsite three, getting closer to the river. Bathrooms in between. Yeah, this is four. All right, let's go check out the river access here. Here is campsite four. A little spring snow last night. So there's campsite three. There's the parking for number four. barely hear the river, you really can't see it from here. Here is campsite number five. And I'm gonna go down to the river on this one. I believe this is the one that has river access. Here's the picnic table and firing at campsite five. We're parked in the parking area. Parking area for four is by that tree. And we've got a path down to the river here. We're looking towards the south here. The river flows from the south to the north and eventually runs into the Colorado River. So fishing south of here, upstream between here and the McPhee Reservoir is catch and release only.
we are looking at campsite number six. Followed by number seven on the right. And campsite number eight as we exit the, the first loop of campgrounds or campsites. So there's a state wildlife area just outside of the campground. I already forget the name of it. This would make a great base camp if you want to, to explore the uh, Hovenweep National Monument or Canyon of the Ancients National Monument. Both of those are within 30 miles. and It's not much further over to uh, Bears, Bears Ears National Monu Monument in Utah. Alright, campsite number 9 on the right. That one's close to the road. <coughs> That's seven on a right over in the other loop. Should be number 10 passing on a right. Number 11. This is another one that's going to be close to the river. Look like you got a lot of brush and stuff up there, though. Yeah, down in the willows, there's a lot of brush down in there along the edge of the river. I don't see a path on that one. Two picnic tables at this next site, which I believe is going to be site number 12. There are no reservations taken for this campground. I believe this is open all year. This one looks like it's probably got river access down there. You still have some willows, but it's pretty clear down to the edge of the river. Which side is this? Pretty sure that was 12. Yeah, that was 12. Next one's 13. Site 13. I've got a sign down here by the river. I'm going to go check that out and see what kind of information. A lot of these signs look like they might be original from when this was opened up in the in the late 70s. So they're pretty well worn and difficult to read. We're behind Camp Site 13. Here's a historic marker talking about the Bradfield Homestead. I'm not sure what creek that is, but it's flowing pretty heavy into the river. Looking upstream. That's towards the campsites that we've already visited. north. Parking for campsite 13. So it looks like we've got another site over here that we'll drive by in a moment. It's a little bit closer to the river. Here's one of the fire grates.
website 17. Oh wow. This has got great river access. This is meant to be a, a road through the campground. It's been traveled on. Let's see where it takes us. Don't go through that pile right there, back up and. Yep. <coughs> It's meant to be where you can come down here and have river access. Sites number 17. I don't see a fire ring in that one. I didn't either. It may not have one. Okay, I put number, I put 17 is best for site river access. No fire ring. Here is campsite number 14. table and a fire ring here in front of us. I believe that might be 15. Yep, that was 15. Let's turn off right after the tree. And then site 16. That's handicap accessible. Concrete all around. And concrete all the way to the restrooms here. Oh, and concrete to the water pump, even. It's a nice table. Okay, I'm writing all sorts of notes for you. Alright, we should have one more loop, which is for the horse trailers. We're looking at site number nine that we passed on our way into this loop. table was for the uh, this horse camping area. Straight ahead in the trees we've got another picnic table. This one's got a little path. We'll go check this one out as well. This one might be up towards a bend in the river. Back at the picnic table. You can hear the river but it's down through the willows. They're pretty thick here. No fire ring here, but there is a little rock ring. And here's a great example of how not to leave your campsite. All kinds of trash, plastic lids, cans, partial bag of marshmallows. Have to see if we've got a trash sack that we can pick up some of this stuff. We'll check out the wildlife area. I want to say maybe Lonesome Dove was the name of it. Something Dove. Yeah, I see that. Something Go like check that. it out. Was that good access over there by the river or no? No, I, 
couldn't. The willows were so thick that I don't think you could get to the river on that one. I mean, this is a nice camping area, but I personally wouldn't come here to camp because it's too open. It's spread out though. If you got one of those down by the river, I think it'd be all right. I mean, it would be better if it had more trees. Yeah. I mean, I know they got trees growing, but... That's the good part about having the shelters on the picnic table here, out of the sun. Get a little bit of shade. But I think for going over to Utah and exploring some of that stuff, this would be... This is probably the furthest west you could get in Colorado without... Without camping somewhere in Utah that's really in the open, even more about where it's hotter. I mean, I would stay here if we had to. I missed the uh, water pump there by the sign as we came in. So, two water pumps. video of the river for a minute. Talking about some rock art here, so there must be some pictographs up in the rock around here. So there we are, the Bradfield Campground Boat Launch. So you can raft or uh, kayak on the Dolores River for a total of 95 miles. Well, 95 is marked here, so probably 96. Up to the town of Bedrock. I've heard this campground gets really busy in April and May once the river really starts flowing. There, there's a map showing kind of where we're at. Cortez, Dolores, McPhee Reservoir, and then we're downriver from the reservoir. Temperature 32 degrees. We had a cold front come through yesterday. A little blizzard action going on all across Colorado yesterday. Got a few snow flurries right now. All right, let's go check out the state wildlife area that's near the entrance. Max RV length was 45 feet. Check it out. Get some wildlife. Quite a few deer. It's going on up. Yeah, there's quite a bit of sign of wildlife in a lot of those campsites that I got out at. So they've been grazing down there this winter. headed south. 
south. Back to the county road. <clears throat> Old barn and corral there. Right before the bridge on the county road crosses the river to our left. If you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button in the bottom right corner. And if you click the bell icon, you'll get notifications every time we upload new videos. Alright, so this was exiting the Bradfield Recreation Site. Oh, it wasn't Dove, it was Dome. Lone Dome Recreation and Wildlife Area. is now Lone Dome State Wildlife Area. Yep, here's a sign stating that the Dolores River from here to McPhee Dam is catch and release only. Be sure to give us a thumbs up if you enjoy this video. Lone Dome State Wildlife Area. So we're getting close to, with this video, we're getting close, I think we're one or two away from 150 campground videos in Colorado. We're going to try to get 100 in 2019. Keep the camera rolling until the battery dies or until we get to the top of the uh, hills here. It's about a mile to get it up out of the canyon to where we've got cell service. Down in here we've got no cell service with Verizon or AT&T. Well, Verizon's in and out. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day.